right. What's going on, guys? Today we're going to be replacing the throttle cable slash harness on this VR600 backpack blower. To start things off, we're going to remove the recoil starter. Three screws. Remove that bad boy. And then take the big cover off the main cover. Uh, there's four screws, two screws on top, two screws on the bottom. You'll see them in a the little crack there, but I not really get an angle from where my camera is. But yeah, so remove those two screws carefully. I try to do it without dropping them, but most of the time they just fall. But either way, uh, remove those two screws. Okay, and then. I, you know, I push the coil down a little bit, or the spark plug boot down a little bit, and then remove the main cover. Very easy to do. Uh, this here, um, we're going to now remove the control. So this one here, it's binding. The cable is binding in the uh, loom. So the throttle cable is binding. You can see it's really twisted up right there at that little eyelet. And uh, they didn't have it connected where the little ring is, and I'm about to just remove right here. Um, and I connected it, but most people sometimes it gets in their way, so sometimes I like to leave the ring off and on some of the blowers or most of the blowers. Um, I feel like it just makes it bind so, or snag on things. So uh, remove this cover right here, this little shroud piece. Uh, you're going to be removing that, and then, uh, yeah, so as you start off removing the, the kill switch or the kill harness, I guess, uh, the wiring harness, if you will, and then you remove that shroud piece, and boom, so that's it for the harness part of it. Now, remove the air filter cover, then the air filter, and then you're going to remove the air filter housing here. That's connected to the carburetor and also the carburetor. You can be removing that. Uh, break it apart from the intake. Remove the impulse line and boom. Pretty much uh, removed now. So take off your throttle cable and that's all she wrote for that part. So now we're going to be start the install of the new cable here. Um, but as you can see, it's kind of binding here. I show you, I have to like literally yank it hard for it to go back to its spot so you can see right there it is in the uh, loom. So remove the control or the control cover, uh, remove those two screws, and then this, this part is kind of time consuming, but just take your time. You don't want any, anything to be assembled incorrectly. So. Right here, I just start to you know, start to be part of installing the new cable and um, or the harness and cable. So, um, take some pliers, pull this little uh, piece of the wire out that has that little lever that shuts it off, and then the other part of the harness. So the blue wire, when you touch the two together, it grounds out the coil and removes the ignition. And that's basically what that little spring thing does that I'm pulling off right now. It touches it to the other one when the rocker is swiveled around. It will touch the two pieces together and preventing spark and that's what shuts off the engine. Uh, so connect this little spring here. You reuse this. They used to send them with the new harnesses but they don't do that anymore. So transfer that bad boy over. Put it back into its little slot there. You can see it's got kind of a, a little slot there where it can go. It can only go one way. And the little tang on the bottom uh, part of that control, you can see um, where it goes and it'll touch the blue wire once I install the blue wire. So I kind of get the black one going there, start pushing it down into its little slot there. And uh, then I'll get the blue one start to go behind it and and you can see that little lever will come and touch that blue terminal uh, and that's how you kill the machine but uh, so yeah I'll just work work this harness into that little slot there 
and work its way down. And I'm using a, a screwdriver, a, a cheap screwdriver. It's a steel one that wants to come with steel equipment. And it's got a, a pretty soft round tip. It's not very sharp, so I always use a screwdriver. Uh, so I don't cut the wire or anything. So you're just stuffing it into that little crevasse and working its way down the control. Connect your throttle cable, don't forget that part. Um, uh, it's very easy to do. And just again, keep pulling it out and you're gonna have a little bit of slack on the on, on the blue wire and pull, just grab the other end and pull it through and remove that slack because the blue wire is slightly longer than the black one. So um, just because that's how the way it connects to the coil. So uh, just keep that in mind. But it, like I said, this is kind of a tedious, time-consuming job as far as like putting this part in, but it's very, 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 very easy to do. Um, so yeah, I'm just working it in, working the wires, making sure they don't get kinked on anything, making sure they don't get damaged, kind of working the wires into their home. And then we will um, start closing her up here, but Again, working them wires around, making sure that they don't get damaged or they can't, they don't get heat on anything when you go to put the big cover on. Nothing like that. So make sure they're protected in that little slot there. So you can see all is good. And we're going to put that little rocker back on. Don't forget that. It could only go one way. It's kind of a square female. And then the uh, lever will ha have a square male part that kind of protrudes into it and just make sure you get it into a position it doesn't matter what position it is you just want to align those two pieces and make sure that it works its way in and then also make sure your trigger you squeeze your trigger just a little bit and drop it into place and make sure that trigger is all the way seated or seated all the way in so you can see it's sticking out just a little bit here but i'll be fixing that here in a second this part can be kind of annoying because the angle right here of where it goes into the control is the absolute worst angle. It's the most weirdest way that steel does their their cables. Um, it, it's very, very known. It's a, very known to uh, go back in the part of the control because of that nasty 90 degree angle that it takes right out of the control. So. Make sure everything's working properly. Make sure the cover just snaps into place. It doesn't. You shouldn't have to put the screws in to make the two pieces come together. Um, but again, that it's a terrible design on Steel's part. Very common for cables to be damaged in that spot. But in this case, it was damaged in another spot. But now we'll be connecting the uh, the cable to the carburetor and then popping it into the slots on the back side of this housing here. It can only go one way. Um, so put that on there. And then we will connect the carburetor and air filter housing to the impulse line and then screwing it into the intake. So make sure the top and the bottom screws um, are seated for the screw like eyelets for a season and then screw in the carburetor. Like I said, it's a very easy job. It's just a little bit tedious. Put the shroud cover back on here and then the connected harness. So as you can see, this is the blue wire that's a little bit longer than the black because it just extends just a little bit more past the black wire. And then sometimes it can be a pain to get on or get started, so I usually give her some love taps and grab whatever tools near me and try to force it on there. But um, yeah, it's just like connecting a you know a wire to a terminal. So make sure that you slide this harness back into those little slots. So as you can see, those little two pegs right there. Make sure that harness sits behind it, because if not, you will damage the wire. I've seen customers try to do this themselves and end up damaging things from not assembling it correctly, but the two screws go into the shroud, as you can see there, and then connect the coil, I forgot to connect the, or put the, the wire loom into its slot, and make sure you do that right here, because you can pinch the wires, or if they're not in the right spot, it will damage them, so um, this part's a little bit tricky putting this little, this little cover on, but 
again, I kind of just work it and it just slides right into place. And there you have it. Push those two uh, buffers over the pegs on the bottom. And then put your four screws. Very straightforward, very easy to do. And then put the, put the bottom screws in. Easy. easy. The bottom screws, you kind of just got to look through that little crack there and screw them in. And then we'll put the recoil starter back on. Three screws for that. Again, I replaced quite a few of these, very common. At the end of the day, so I'm a little bit tired here. And I try to put the air filter into the cover here. I'm like, what am I doing? Because in most units, that's how you do it, but backpack board you put it into the housing and then put the cover in so again end of the day I'm ready to go so screw the cover back on and then you will connect the control here at the end so again sometimes I'll put that ring back on most of the time the it's broken off the anchor for that ring is broken off so I normally don't put the rings back on. Uh, I would rather it be kind of loose because these guys would twist the harness around and around and you know it just becomes a problem. So sometimes I'll put them back on if that if that anchor is not, is new and in good shape, but in this case it just falls off. So I didn't put the ring back on, but the two screws, put the control on and that's pretty much it. That's all she wrote for this job. So hope you enjoyed the video. Guys, have a nice day.